but yet they judge us differently because we're women. That's coming from women. Catherine Legg is a seasoned race car driver from Britain. Her very first race in the United States was the Long Beach Grand Prix in 2005. You would think with such an amazing start to her American career, her fellow race car drivers would have nothing but respect. Most did, and still do, but as you just heard her fellow women drivers, not so much. Now Catherine Legg is at the point in her career where she is thinking of the future and passing the baton. She is doing that by teaming up with a relative newcomer, Sheena Monk. I'm Jackie Ray on this week's episode of The Word. Catherine Legg and Sheena Monk are talking how they are preparing for this year's Grand Prix and how they hope teaming up will inspire women to support other women. So you think the Democratic Party cares about black people? Believe it or not, Rex, I think that tweet is part of the problem. Do you feel like we could have addressed this homeless issue much sooner? You have to speak a word, make it a good one. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to come be on the show. Um, I just want to introduce you to everybody. Um, Sheena Monk, I'm going to start with you. If you just want to tell a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and your your first light bulb that went off that this might be what you wanted to do. Yeah, so I'm Sheena Monk. I'm from Newtown, Pennsylvania. Um, I've only been doing this for about five years, but mm-hmm. I you know, grew up loving cars and um, basically anything with an engine. So um, my dad raced motorcycles professionally. And so I kind of grew up around it. And But it was more like backyard, like dirt bike, go-kart kind of thing. And, um, you know, I just did it recreationally as I grew up and uh, did some high, perf- what we call high performance driving events. And, um, you know, chance would have it. I was at one of those. Um, just in my regular streetcar, and somebody said to me like, Hey, like, you're pretty good for like somebody with no experience and no training. Would you, um, maybe want to pursue this if it was there? And it was, you know, obviously something I had dreamed of. I just never understood the path to doing it. And so my route into the sport was a little atypical. Um, Catherine's is more of the, the conventional true route to doing it. Um, so I got into it really late. I was, you know, 27, I think, Mm -hmm. but became professional. So um, it's been quite a climb. Catherine, what about you? What was your first light bulb that said, you know what, this might be a thing? Oh, crikey. So (laughs) Catherine, like I've been doing this for a very long time in complete contrast to Sheena. Although I would say there are a lot of similarities between us and the more we get to know each other, the more of those become apparent. Like we're basically the same person. She's just younger and prettier. (laughs) <laughs> so, everybody who's watching this is going to say you know what you guys are equally beautiful just so you know <laughs> no um she's honestly it's blown my mind how impressive she's been for how little experience she's got and mm-hmm. how quickly that she's learned so I've been doing this for a long time I started racing go-karts when I was nine and uh I I came the traditional route you know I did route as you say over here (laughs) I grew up in England racing go-karts and we didn't have any family money so I had to kind of claw my way up and through and so I basically took rides doing whatever I could at the time and some of them were great and some of them were less than great um one of them my nickname the car of almost certain death uh because it was so sketchy and I worked my way up through open wheels so I did Formula Ford, Formula Renault, but I did races here and there and didn't really ever do a full season until I came to America. Mm -hmm. And I came to America in 2005 and I did first full season in Atlantic racing. And my first race was Long Beach Grand Prix. And uh, I won that race, which is what catapulted my entire career. So Long Beach is obviously very close to my heart. And um, it's just, yeah, it's been... I actually have a Long Beach Grand Prix sticker on my computer. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, it won like South California's sport, best sporting moment or something like that. Like it was it was a big deal for me as as much as anything else. And so Sheena's in the position I was in back then, kind of. Um, you know, she's working her way up through the ranks and this is her first time in the big leagues. And uh, she's never driven on a on a street course or anything. So she's going to get the excitement and the full Long Beach experience when we get there. And, and it's down to me to prepare her as, as well as I possibly can. 
which is next on I've got a long list of to-do lists because as Sheena said we are very busy at the moment yes. and so just trying to to get everything done is a challenge in and itself when we go to the races it's a relief right we get a rest mm. I cover the WNBA as well and so one of the things that I've learned from covering the WNBA and I had like a brief stint um covering the women's football league which is soccer for us here in America but um and it's just women's sports seem to be so they're more embraced over in England than they are here. It doesn't have a lot of the stigma. Like I think here we get a lot of, you know, the need to be sexy in some way for them to be, be taken seriously versus across the pond. It's just, okay, these are athletes. They're good at what they do and, and they're embraced as such. So it's a little different. And and that's one of the things that I learned immediately when I started covering women's basketball, it's like night and day difference, how they're embraced, you know, overseas. Do you find that's the same when it comes to racing or is that, is, is it, is that not different in that way? And I can't wait for this answer. But... <laughs> it's funny you should say that because she and I have this discussion a lot and it's something that I've grown up since that point thinking about, right? Like, how do you want to be portrayed? Um, how do you want to play your career? So at the time there was, basically two female drivers in the world and I've raced all over the world and so I've seen the evolution of things kind of happen from from a European standpoint and North American standpoint and it was myself and Danica mm-hmm. and so Danica being American me being British I don't I never made the connection between the sports in Europe and the sports over here being sexualized or or not but it's really a tightrope to walk you have to be seen as feminine and you have to be seen as attractive and to get sponsors, to get marketed, to be able to do this in the first place, right? But then you want to be taken seriously mm-hmm. and you want to be treated equally and the same as everybody else. So how, where is that line? Um, so I, I struggled with it. Um, I don't so much anymore. Back in the day, I wanted to do everything that the guys do and I didn't want to wear any makeup and I didn't want to be any different because I wanted the people within the sport just to see me as another race car driver. But that's not what gets you the sponsors and the partners and everything, especially over here to go racing. So I I feel like it is just this tightrope to walk and a lot of people go overboard with it. Um, And then I think you don't get taken seriously because then people see you as more of an object and they think that you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Like I see a lot of young drivers coming up through and we won't drop any names, but Sheena and I have already discussed this. Like there's a lot of them that are doing it for the wrong reasons because they're doing it for the attention rather than doing it for the love of racing. So you have to prove yourself at the same time. And so it's, it's really difficult. I mean, it's, a lot easier when you look like Sheena looks right like she's gorgeous so she doesn't even have to try <laughs> um but then she can just focus on the racing and being taken seriously and it doesn't take away from anything the problem is it's not so much the people within the sport it's being judged by the people on the periphery whether that's the um the fans or the sponsors or the series and you, you know it's it's really tough, man. And the guys do not have that at all in any way, shape or form. And I don't think that they can understand it because you also want your dad to be proud. So you don't want to go and do like on a, in a bikini, like over the car and, and like try and use that either. But you do want to be seen as you. And so I don't know. Sheena, Sheena has a bunch of thoughts on it too. And I'm slightly more conservative. I have very much a push pull conversation on this. And, you know, we always kind of joke that like, okay, we'll meet in the middle. So um, I definitely do agree with her stance on, you know, trying to just be neutral so that you're respected for your craft and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, But I also think that, um, you know, I I don't want to say that we are using the advantages we have as women to just stand out differently in the sport, because I do think that there is like a a connotation and a perception and um, just generally like you're almost like creating your own brand, right. Right. As a driver. And so 
um, you know, I think depending on the way you set yourself out, it, it determines what kind of, you know, Catherine's saying like, yes, to some degree, it does help potentially bring in new partners, but I think equally as much, um, if you push a certain image, then I think you're actually self-limiting your partners at the same time. And so there's this really strange middle ground of, you know, still being very feminine, but also um, maintaining uh, an image that is that is serious and uh, focused on on the actual sport. It's so funny because no matter what sport it is that I ask this question to women, it's always the same. It's always about walking that fine line. And then, as you said, Catherine, I am, I would bet my last dollar this is not something that men ever have to worry about because they can just go up, get up, put gel in their hair or not. Nobody cares. It's not. It's never a thing with them. So I'm, I'm glad you guys are both so open yeah, and candid about I, that. I, I, to almost debate that to a degree and oh, I'm cool. not, <laughs> well, no, you know why I'm a I'm a big basketball fan me right? too and so like I see especially more now and I I guess maybe it's social media that's doing this but like I wonder do the NBA players and I especially think this for like the rookies um because like they're starting to show players um entering the arenas before the games and like what are they wearing and what kind of uh like luggage are they carrying and so like I just think from you know do the rookies feel like they have to dress maybe when they don't have as big of a contract as like mm. some of the stars in the NBA and so like are they feeling pressured because that's like a new component to the game is like and, and you know you see it in the NFL too but I feel like the swag is pretty high in the NBA so you know, do those guys feel pressured about like, are people giving them the outfits to show up? But I only say that just because I'm a big Sixers fan. So I paid. Oh, see, we were good for a while. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) No, I agree with that, though. But I still think that, you know, if Kyle Kuzma decides to wear like that bubble, whatever the heck that was, he wore one day, I still don't know what that was. (laughs) But you know, we can laugh about it. We can joke about it. But as a woman, if you wear that, it's it's so people are gonna be so critical of you. You're not going to get away with it. You're not going to be able to laugh it off. That was, that was a moment in time for him. That would have been the rest of the season for anyone in the W. So it's, it's one of those things that I just understand those nuances at the same time. I am a big basketball fan as well. So I looked up to like Lisa Leslie, when I thought about going into, you know, playing basketball as a career, but I had these like role models to look up to for the sport that I potentially wanted to play. And the first time I covered uh, the Grand Prix and I started looking into, you know, the history of it and, and finding out that, you know, there, there was an all woman team from 1966 to 19. I had no idea. And I just didn't know. I'm, I'm like, how is this not a thing? How is this not pushed in the forefront in case there are little girls out there that are thinking about that? Why do we not get the same role models in this specific sport? Do you do either of you have a thought about that? I, I just think in general that. Um, I don't, I don't know that it's really normal for girls to like cars. And Mm -hmm. I I think it sort of stems from that. Like, it's kind of like, you know, like it's kind of like a yucky, dirty thing. Like, you, you know, and I think just, um, you know, just conventional gender roles are not necessarily, I think even just women's sport, you know, Mm -hmm. is how long are we talking that, you know, women are heavily playing sports. And so I think that like auto racing is just like a further evolution of that, of just like, you know, rolling up the sleeves and, and really like being gritty. Catherine and I talk pretty extensively about this. Like you have to specifically for auto racing, you have to be so hardened and tough. Um, you know, frankly, you're just getting the crap kicked out of you and Mm. (laughs) it's hot and it's miserable a lot of the times. And it's very, very, very physical. Um, and frankly, you know, like there's, there's always great days, right. But it, there's also like some really, really bad days. And it's like, how tough are you to actually bounce back from that? And so I think that like, you know, maybe we don't see so many women in the sport just because, um, I think to, for me, it stems again from just like, you know, our girls playing with little girls playing with cars. Like I did, that's the mm-hmm. thing. So like, I remember, you know, there's pictures all the way back of me with like 
a Barbie Corvette. And like, that was what I wanted as a kid. Like I loved cars back to the time. I think I was maybe three years old. Um, but you know, maybe I was just my dad's daughter and I really embraced all of that kind of stuff. But I think more and more, I, I personally see a lot of changes in all roles at the track. So not just drivers, but, um, you know, corner workers, engineers, mechanics. And I I just think in general, women are understanding that like, yeah, maybe you might not want to drive the car, but Mm -hmm. if you, if you love science and you love data, then, you know, there's a place for you there as well. Yep. Catherine, what about you? Yeah, I would agree with pretty much everything Sheena just said. I think it's a numbers game at the end of the day, times are changing. So if you look at my parents' generation, my mom says it's dirty, it's dangerous, uh, it's smelly, it's noisy. <laughs> you know, like, why would I want to do that? Um, and my sister's very much the same. You know, she thinks the same. So I think the following generation, things have started to change. And there's been more women doing a multitude of different things. Like you look at 100 years ago, there weren't um, women running countries. There weren't women running companies, let alone do it there was no female sport right when I was growing up we weren't allowed to play football soccer mm-hmm. so, <laughs> so things are it's just a constant evolution and so more and more women are getting involved more and more women are realizing that they can basically do everything and so then it will trickle down like if you had 50 50 percent doing go-karting and working their way up through the ranks then you'd see more women at the top levels but you don't when I was doing it I was one of maybe two or three and then out of those two or three I was the only one who continued it because Mm -hmm. Sheena said it's really really hard and you get bullied a lot you get made fun of a lot especially when you're younger and you're doing it so you have to be pretty tough and you have to do it on your own because there isn't anybody else and it's really nice that this year Sheena and I can do it together because we understand each other. I can guarantee you that out of the other hundred guys on the grid, they have no idea what it's like in our shoes because they are one of the guys. And even though we're just another driver, it's a totally different experience for us than it is for them. So we need to learn to support the ones that are getting in that show talent um, to push through when it's hard hard right because when it gets hard maybe they think oh this isn't for me I'm going to go and do whatever else is but just like with all women's sports um, there's more women watching them now there's more Mm -hmm. women supporting other women instead of thinking I want to be the best woman which is as Sheena will tell you my pet hate then the more we support each other and the more we watch each other the more demand there will be, the more women will get paid in the sport, the more women will tell their daughters that it's possible to do it um you know I didn't think it was possible when I was growing up I just didn't give up um it wasn't that anybody told me it wasn't possible either as nobody else was doing it it just didn't enter my psyche that it it was anything that I could do because it's all guys and I never asked anybody well can I do that I just wasn't a thing I'm just really stubborn Mm -hmm. so I think it's at the end of the day it's a numbers game and times times are changing um and it's one of probably the only sport I think you're probably going to correct me now that we can compete equally on equal terms right because it's not outright strength yes you have to be fit and you have to be tough and everything else but that's not that you have to be able to bench so much or do you you have to be good at taking g-forces and all the other things but we can compete on an even playing field whereas you can't in football or basketball or anything else because physically we're different so it should be the first sport that makes the makes the jump but it is so male orientated that it probably won't be how did you guys find each other because I know um for you Sheena it was I think 2023 was a little uncertain for you and then the next thing I read you two have found your way to each other so tell me how that story happened it was meant to be <laughs> yeah I um had reached out to Catherine about something that was just kind of unrelated. Um, I was actually in Europe at the time and I was asking her to just make a connection for me um, to somebody that was in the same place that I was. And, um, you know, we got to talking and she said, what does next year look like for you? And I said, frankly, I I don't have a clue. And it's kind of late for me to not have anything that's solid yet. Um, And so 
it was kind of funny. Things just sort of, you know, the conversation just started to roll and it was like, well, maybe we can put something together. Um, cause both of us just really didn't have anything that was firmed up yet. And mm-hmm. so Catherine made a few phone calls and before you know it, it was like, we're going to do this. And, and it really was just that kind of off the cusp and, and things just took shape really quickly. And yeah. Catherine, do you feel like she's your counterpart? I know you say you guys are. <laughs> I do. Honestly, it's been like rejuvenating to me because I've been like I told you in the beginning I've been doing this a long time right and so you go through good years you go through bad years you go through situations where you're in a good team or a bad team or and it can get stale at some point and um to find the motivation to go train to get just the motivation in general um you know I do genuinely from the bottom of my heart believe that everything happens for a reason when it comes to things like this and I think this happened for a reason and um I worked with Sheena a few years ago when it was her first ever year driving a race car and my dad's like literally her biggest fan it drives me up the wall I'm like I'm I'm right here (laughs) and um he looks at all the data and everything he's like she's got something she's got something really special and I'm like yeah she does I mean she had a massive accident in California and came back like it was no thing like mentally nothing and I know from personal experience that is not easy to do right like she's got she's got guts so um to be able to get to drive with her and kind of like pass the baton on and we joke about this too like okay I'm doing this with you now and sort of 20 years time or however long it is going to be when you stop racing then we'll do it again and I still want to call your races and do everything because it's been really fun as well so far. Like it's just given me more energy and um, I, re- I I love her as a human and I I love working with her and I'm, yeah, just, I'm really excited about this year. It's not going to be easy. We've had a, a really tough last weekend. We had a great first one, but without, still with our issues. So um, it's also a mental challenge to like turn things around and put mm. things back on an evil ke- even keel and, go and get some results then I tell you one thing I cannot wait to be standing on the podium with her and like high-fiving and spraying champagne over each other and stuff and being like yeah we did this we did this thing like this is what we set out to do and I am even more sure that it will happen as is barley yeah <laughs> I love that you said that because you said earlier one of your pet peeves is is the competition between women instead of the support between women do you think that this partnership between two of the two of you can kind of show other women like yeah you can compete in the same sport but you can still support each other as well I'm actually gonna butt in there and sorry Sheena but (laughs) absolutely like the number of women that we come across in the sport as well that are just out to be the best woman or not supportive of other women is mind-blowing to me like they don't even know you. I'm, I got here on merit. I'm just as good as any of the guys. Sheena got there on merit. She's just, but yet they judge us differently because we're women. That's coming from women. It's worse with a lot of women than it is with the men. And I think that's absolute rubbish. And so it would make my heart very happy to prove them all wrong, honestly. And I mean, I think we already have just by the fact, you know, we're so close and we get on so well and we're doing this thing and we're going to be successful, right? Right. Yeah. Ironically for me, um, right when I started racing, so it was like, right as Catherine started coaching me, um, there was a, a woman's automotive club. So it wasn't racing. It was more just like, you know, car enthusiasts, but it was, it was a women's group. Um, and they didn't know that I was in the Facebook group. And one of the other, so there was like, you know, maybe like, 150 women in this group and I didn't comment very much and there was a woman who ran the entire group and a very well-known Instagram page and she it, it's like incomprehensible to me she took like pictures of my first outing driving a race car and basically like mocked me and said like how I was faking it for clout and like you know look how hard she's trying and I remember like butting in and like just very professionally, but like I felt so much empathy for her at that point. It was just like your entire mission of everything that you have argued that you are about 
just completely went out the window and I'm here and I'm seeing this. And I, I had to feel bad for her at that point. It was because it's like, you've established yourself. Like, frankly, within the industry, people knew who this person was. And it's like, you just completely undermined every mission that you claimed to be about and to love. And so ironically, like some of the, the most um, unsupportive people have been other women. And that's from day one for me. It was just because my path into the sport, I think, was rather unconventional. Um, so, I, you know, it was later in life and it's it's difficult to get into at that point. And so I just think people were looking at it. And it was kind of what Catherine touched on earlier. It was like, are you doing this because you really love it or are you doing it because you think it looks cool online? Um, and that's frankly, like kind of hard. The distinction between that is difficult, right? So, um, you know, for me, this is, a lifelong dream. Um, and you know, like again, Kat touched on this, like I had a huge accident and, mm -hmm. you know, I broke nine bones in that you, you wouldn't come back if you weren't absolutely out of your mind, obsessed with this, just because it, it's literally, you, you go through something that traumatic and like you either have to be obsessed or insane to continue doing it. So Sorry, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so I think, you know, at that point, I, I, I hate to say it, right. But I actually like in some ways that accident, like almost felt like I got street cred for that because it's like, okay, like, so she came back from that. So like, she really means that she really wants to be here. Um, just for our listeners who don't know, you had four pelvic fractures, four broken ribs, a, and a, a broken, a broken sacrum, which is technically another pelvic fracture. So but that's like your whole lower section feels seems like. Yeah. Yeah. It was tough. You you can't really walk very well or, or sit very well. <laughs> can't anything, honestly, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it took every bit, frankly, of like nine months to heal fully. Um, right at the six month mark, I started, started to kind of feel like, okay, this body resembles what I think it used to be. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it took that long and, um, you know, kind of against doctor's orders, I went back and raced at seven months because I wanted to get a full season in the following year. So, um, but yeah, it was just, it was one of those things where like literally hitting a brick wall and it's like, this is like, not going to slow me down. This isn't going to stop me. I'm doing what I love. I'm doing what I always wanted to do. And so you just persevere and press on and you know you wait for your body to heal I had to listen to my body a lot right there was plenty of times where it was just like you know what it's not going to do what I'm asking it to and I just had to um, come to terms with that but I um you know I'm doing what I love and I've just been climbing the ladder ever since which eventually you know I've kind of been biting down gritting my teeth and that you know it took years right but now I'm competing basically at the highest level with Catherine. Now, Catherine, you're familiar with this, this track in Long Beach um, in, a, in a very fond way. What are some of your favorite parts of, of the track and what are some of the toughest for you? Oh, um, I love literally all of Long Beach. It's uh, the first ever street course that I did. And um, I've done it a lot now, I think. So I won the first year I was there. I won in Atlantic. And I finished sixth in my first, first ever champ car race. Apparently, I can't talk. And then I've come back and I've been super competitive literally every time I came back, apart from last year. Um, and it just, it speaks to me. Like the track just, and I just gel. You know, some tracks you tend to, they tend to come more naturally to you than others. And this one, it's just I don't know, like even turn one, the right amount of curb. And I'm I'm not scared of getting all the way up to the walls. And I've lost my fair share of mirrors at that place. Um, and just the bumps and everything and the atmosphere and the, it's just everything. Like there isn't any part of it that I don't, oh no, there is a part of it I don't like. So at the end of the back straight, uh, where our pits are, the 90 right. Let me see what turn it is because I have it on here. Nine, ten, nine. Uh, 10, 9, 10. I don't like that anymore. I used to like it, but now they do the drifting on it. And so mm -hmm. when you get that rubber, it's super slick and it changes so much throughout the weekend that you never really know does it have grip, does it not have grip? And and it tends to like push the rubber all the way up to the wall. So 
because they're getting close to the wall, you've got a cushion almost. And then if you go over that, then you're in the wall. So mm. it's it's not very progressive and it's not got the same surface as the rest of the track. Also the hairpins, like an art form of getting around that. But it's all it's all awesome. I don't I don't know. And even the atmosphere, like in the infield, you can't you have to fight your way through people to get anywhere fast, right? Like it's just seas of people everywhere. It's awesome. It's just a it's an experience. And um Sheena's going to be going to do the the PR event there uh, on the run up to, so she'll get to look at the track and everything before it's covered in people and pit, pits mm-hmm, and paddocks mm-hmm. and, and everything. And so I hope she loves it as much as I do. But the discussion that her and I will be having on the run up to it with data and gears and where you break and what you do and everything that's going to be going to be a long one because I got a lot of tricks around this place too. Oh, nice. Sheena, are you looking forward? Yeah, I am. I've never been on a street circuit before, so it's definitely going to be a huge learning opportunity for me. Um, Just as a driver, you're always looking for chances like that to just kind of progress your craft in a different way. And so this is, you know, a unique new growth for me. Um, But I do similarly realize that, you know, it's going to be a challenge. Um, The margin for error is very small. And, you know, sometimes Catherine praises me for it, but other times she's like, come on, you got to go. The way I operate is, you know, I kind of like to err on the side of caution at times Mm -hmm. and sort of build my progress just so that I'm not overstepping and wrecking cars um, just to to find my limit. Um, And so in a place like this, um, you know, since it's not a place where we can go and practice or do what we call testing, um, you know, it'll be good that I get to see the track ahead of time, but frankly, like I have to spend some time on a simulator ahead of time, which I don't enjoy doing, frankly. Um, but it's really the only way for me to, you know, get my feet wet as best I can and, and get up to speed quickly, because that will be very important for us. What about your pit crew? How, how valuable is your pit crew? Are there any women on your pit crew? Yes, we have one um Karen she's awesome our our guys are incredible honestly and they they deserve the credit not us because we have the easy job in a way you know they they they're there before us they're there after us they fix all the damage that we do (laughs) they set the car up it's about them being precise as much as it is us being precise and we can't say enough good things about them in Long Beach it's especially important because you can make or break a race. It's not that easy to overtake. And so the shorter your pit stop is, the more places you make up or or can make up or the most effect, like you have to do the best pit stop. And that's on the guys as much as it's on us doing our driver changes. Like if, if they are impeccable on the pit stop, then that's track position for us. And that could mean the difference between winning and finishing sixth or seventh like mm-hmm. it's huge so it's a lot of pressure for them too but we're very fortunate that we have a really great crew well this past weekend it was like they were more like battlefield triage medics <laughs> than anything else no really it was like we were always coming in with a problem and time is of the essence and it's like they're literally saving the car's life when you bring it in <laughs> And then it's like, okay, go, go, go. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, you can't really get the car back to a hundred percent in that kind of a time frame. but it kept us, you know, in the fight. You know, I, I wouldn't say we were competitive by any stretch, but, um, you know, the car was able to keep going and get us valuable points for the year. So, uh, they're equally as important and, you know, they're, they're kind of the people that don't, don't always get the credit. Thank you guys so much for joining. I can't wait to see you guys both in person. Um, and to close out Women History Month, though, do you, in the spirit of us breaking some of the competition and just supporting women across all sports, across all genres of no matter what we're doing, can you both give us a quick word of advice for women? Catherine, I'll start with you. Never, ever give up. And if you doubt yourself, fake it until you believe. I love that. Sheena? Yeah, for me, it's pretty simple. It's go out and do what you love. And, you know, you don't have to be good at it. It doesn't matter how old you are. But if you're passionate about it and and you just really put your head down and go for it, you can you can do anything. 
This is only the third time Catherine and Sheena have raced together, so I am sure they would love your support on April 14th. For a full Grand Prix schedule of events and tickets, make sure you check out GPLB and make sure you subscribe to LBPost.com for more behind the scenes Grand Prix action. Once again, I'm Jackie Ray, and remember if you have to speak a word, make it a good one. <laughs>